Welcome back to another video everyone. Today I have something special for you as I am joined by Zach from Theme Park Media. We have collaborated to bring you all two videos where we will discuss Six Flags and Cedar Fair potentially purchasing new coasters in the future from Intamin. In this video we will be discussing Six Flags specifically. In the description you will find a link to our video about Cedar Fair purchasing from Intamin which is on Zach's channel. Be sure to go check that out and Zach's other content as well. His channel is fantastic and I would probably say it's my favorite new coaster channel currently. Very good content overall. Without further ado, let's talk about the possibility of Six Flags buying from Intamin in the future. The first ever Intamin coaster to be installed at a Six Flags park dates back to 1984 with the introduction of Sarajevo bobsleds at Six Flags Magic Mountain. This would be relocated to the original park in the chain, Six Flags Over Texas for the 1986 season, where it still currently operates as La Vibora. La Vibora is Intamin's Swiss bob model, a type of bobsled coaster with no track, only a half circular tube for the car to traverse. This model was popular at the time and Six Flags would purchase another of this model that would travel from Six Flags Great Adventure to Six Flags Great America, then to Great Escape where it still operates as well. Six Flags would purchase a couple more Intamin coasters following this. These included the ill-fated Flashback which ended its operating life at Six Flags Magic Mountain, the very early stand-up coaster Batman the Escape which ended its operating life at Six Flags Astroworld, and Cobra at La Ronde which was actually a relocation from a Swedish park. Six Flags would begin to rely more heavily on Intamin starting in the year 2000. From here on out we got many notable rides including Superman the ride at Six Flags New England, the two Superman Ride of Steel clones at Six Flags America and Darien Lake, King Daka at Great Adventure, the world's tallest coaster, and El Toro, an Intamin prefabricated wooden coaster also added to Great Adventure the following year. These are just a few examples of Intamin and Six Flags working together over the years. The last brand new coaster Six Flags would purchase from Intamin would be Green Lantern First Flight, which opened at Magic Mountain in 2011. This coaster itself was added several years after the last Intamin in the chain was purchased. Unfortunately, Green Lantern turned out to be viewed as a terrible ride by both the GP and enthusiasts. Green Lantern will be relocated to Laurent for the 2020 season after it suffered many issues and a long period of standing but not operating at Magic Mountain. One of the very first things I noticed with Six Flags is that right around the same time, they stopped working with both Bolliger and Mabillard as well as Intamin. The last brand new B&M for the chain would come in 2012, just one year after the opening of Green Lantern First Flight. Both B&M and Intamin are commonly viewed as two of the premier roller coaster manufacturers in the entire market. Because of their reputation and quality design and craftsmanship, both companies are very expensive for amusement parks. Even many of the smaller scale models from these companies can cost $15 million easily. Six Flags, ever since their bankruptcy filing in 2009, has adapted a business model of installing a new ride at every park every year. Many of their parks will receive the same exact rides, and Six Flags likely gets a discount on many of these rides for buying in larger quantities. So, even though every park gets something, they all have been pretty modest additions for the majority of parks. Many of the new major coasters the chain receives now are manufactured by companies such as RMC, Premier, and as of recently, SNS. These are all companies that have been known to produce rides for much cheaper than the likes of B&M and Intamin. Due to the company purchasing cheaper coasters starting around the time of their bankruptcy and restructuring, I believe that the answer as to why the chain hasn't bought from Intamin for several years can be answered. It is simply not in the budget for Six Flags currently. With the bankruptcy filing and having to restructure, Six Flags would need to focus their business more on building great budget rides for many of their parks versus buying huge coasters by B&M and Intamin. Six Flags purchased a lot of B&M and Intamin roller coasters at an alarmingly high rate in the early 2000s, namely 2000 and 2001 when they went overboard with coaster additions. Due to this, Six Flags would need to be more modest in the future with their additions. This is the same reason you will find many clones at several Six Flags parks that are made by more affordable manufacturers. Cloned coasters are easier and cheaper to purchase, but even so, companies like SNS, RMC, and Premier still provide many great custom designed coasters in recent years, and I'm sure they will continue to do so. 
Another big factor for Intamin not having designed any coasters for Six Flags recently, I believe, is their reliability. We have seen this displayed more with Intamin installations at Cedar Fair Parks, but Six Flags has also dealt with their fair share of issues on Intamin rides. As mentioned earlier, Green Lantern First Flight was viewed as a huge flop in many ways. Also, new companies have emerged that they have worked with in recent years, as well as other companies stepping up their game. There was also the incident on Superman the Ride in the early 2000s, which was not the fault of Intamin, but it surely did not help their reputation. Many rides by Intamin would always face huge amounts of downtime and would have to be reworked after opening to accommodate for the stresses on the track and riders. Both of these factors led to many parks to cut ties with Intamin, and it is a likely contributing factor for Six Flags not working with them anymore. After seeing the issues other parks were having with their Intamins and having issues issues to deal with themselves regarding Green Lantern. Six Flags felt it was in their best interest to stop working with a company, at least for the time being. And of course, during the same time, new coaster manufacturer Rocky Mountain Construction would emerge in the coaster market, completely changing the coaster game in a very huge way, forcing many competitors to innovate. So, ultimately, will Six Flags ever purchase another brand new large-scale Intamin coaster? I personally do not see it happening at any point in at least the next five years or so, if it ever happens again at all. Six Flags is very much playing it safe with smaller additions rather than trying to break records and the bank and build the biggest coasters. I think that is a wise decision on their part, and of course, they don't have to worry about many of the issues with reliability that plagues many intimate rides. I think as enthusiasts, we would all love to see some more great Intamin mega coasters and such introduced to these parks, but it doesn't seem to be something Six Flags is concerned with or thinks they need to do, as their business model seems to be doing pretty well for them. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Of course, if you haven't watched it already, be sure to click on the link in the description to watch the video on Zach's channel, Theme Park Media, where we discuss the possibility of Cedar Fair ever working with Intamin again. While there, be sure to subscribe to his channel and check out his other great content. Leave your thoughts in the comments about Six Flags working with Intamin. Do you think it is a possibility in the future? Let us know. Like my page Coaster Daddy on Facebook and follow me at Coaster Daddy Official on Instagram. Thank you all so much for watching. This is Coaster Daddy. And this is Theme Park Media. Bye.